Hello everyone. Here we are with news roundup number 209. Um, nothing about the Olympics as yet, which surprises me, but I hope you've enjoyed watching it. I certainly have. It is nice to see other kinds of sport on television other than football. Here we go. <laughs> It seems we Brits prefer to be cremated rather than buried when we die. The BBC reports on an online survey carried out by YouGov, which says 58% prefer cremation, compared to 17% of those who would opt for burial. The survey also showed that 79% want their ashes to be scattered and 7% want them to be kept. Wearing black was seen as a requirement by 22%, but 45% said wearing other colours was acceptable so long as they were dark and sombre. A further 29% thought it was acceptable to wear any colour of clothing to a funeral. That's very interesting. Sadly, I am going to a funeral on Thursday. Um, one of my clients, 85 years old, lovely lady, who has quite stipulated that you are to wear bright colours to her funeral. Good for her. Workmen installing cables at a room in Cambridge University discovered a 300-year-old shoe used to ward off evil spirits, reports the Daily Mirror. The shoe, measured at a modern-day size 6, was found in the Senior Common Room building at St John's College's Tudor Era Second Court, which was originally the private residence of its master. Experts reckon it was built between 1598 and 1602, but it is thought the shoe was put behind the panels during changes to its interior between the end of the 17th century and midway through the 18th. Richard Newman from the Cambridge Archaeological Unit said it was positioned between the chimney breast and the window, which is exactly the sort of location where you would expect to find a shoe being used in this way. Shoes were thought to protect the living and prevent malevolent spirits from entering. I haven't got a malevolent spirit in my house. The noise you can sometimes hear is my cat, who is desperate to go outside. But I daren't let him out because he's got to go to the vets tomorrow. And he's one of those cats that sometimes doesn't turn up in the morning. So sadly, he's got to stay in all this time and he's not a very happy pussycat. So I do apologise if he interrupts. <laughs> the Daily Express tells us, that priest Father Lee Taylor has revived the medieval tradition of blessing the beer. He took his congregation from Croydon Minster to conduct the ceremony at the town's oldest pub, the Dog and Bull. Father Taylor blessed the beer barrels and pumps with holy water and incense, using instructions from a 1614 manual for the benediction of everyday items. Up for auction is a photograph taken during the first moon landing and signed by all three of the Apollo 11 crew. The Daily Express says the rare photograph was given by the astronauts to John Cleland, whose car hire firm arranged limousines for the trio during a VIP visit to London in October 1969. Now his widow has put the image up for sale, with experts tipping it to make around £1,500. Lee-on-Sea, a seaside resort in Essex, has been named the happiest place to live in Britain, replacing Harrogate, which had won the award for the last three years. The town, which is renowned for its cockle sheds, had been, has been praised for its community spirit arts, sports facilities and sense of belonging, says the Daily Mail. Second place in the poll conducted by online estate agents Right Move was Troon in Scotland, with Harrogate finishing third. An article in The Independent says that the London borough of Kingston-upon-Thames is loaning out free bikes for a month in a bid to boost cycling amid increasing transport pressures. 
anyone who lives, works or studies in Kingston can borrow a brand new bike for a month. It will also loan out helmets, locks and lights and offer cycle training to those who want it. People are then required to return the bikes at the end of the month or have the chance to buy them for a reduced price. A very good idea, I think. The Yorkshire Dales is to get water voles for the first time in 50 years, according to the BBC. About a 100 are to be released into Malham Tarn, England's highest freshwater lake, by ecologists from the National Trust. Voles have become one of the UK's most threatened mammals, with numbers dropping by nearly 90% in recent decades. Roisin Black, a National Trust ranger at Malham Tarn, said, In the rest of Europe, water voles are common. In Britain, the creatures are incredibly rare. We know water voles have thrived at Malham Tarn in the past, and thanks to work by the National Trust, the habitat here is perfect for water voles again. Oh, let's keep our fingers crossed that they they like it there and stay. Malham Tarn is absolutely beautiful. I've been there and it's well worth the hike up to have a look. So I hope you enjoyed that and maybe we'll talk some Olympics next time. Take care, everyone. Bye bye.